Yes, pal. Hi, hi. How are you? Great to see you. How are you doing? Good, good. The technology worked. I can't believe. Yeah. That uh, that's good. I was worried that um cuz just for everybody else, uh Vitor and I have been speaking for some time on uh online and we were trying to work out how best to do it and um I was worried I was going to let him down with not being able to do it well so I'm happy that it's been done. <laughs> yeah, in, in this times we have to adapt to the technology. Um, <laughs> correct, correct. So I'm really glad that um that we've got quite a lot of people joining. Um maybe we can start in uh in one or two minutes time and we can get some questions going as well Victor. But firstly, how how are you doing today? I'm good, I'm good. Quite busy but uh it's it's a good day. I I like what makes. Correct. And um and what time is it where you are now? Uh 11:00 a.m. in Arizona. So tell me, is it it's probably a bit sunnier where you are than it is where I am right now? Yeah, and warm too. I think we need to swap. Um I I I don't know. <laughs> nice. So, uh we've got we've got some nice good amount of people starting already, which is great. Um do you do you maybe want to do the introduction and just like maybe give maybe one or two minutes as to how we decided to to do this together and maybe some of our ideas? Yeah, I I can I can give the introduction. Well, uh we we have been uh speaking for a while now trying to uh do a initiative to uh share with uh the, with people about how to uh break into the football industry and for you that uh, actually know uh, Daniel he is a top lawyer in the UK and the author of the uh, book Don't Deal that is a, a guide for uh, football transfers and uh, agents and clubs and I uh, suggest Daniel to yeah, to speak about how to adapt to the football industry because uh, for the, for the people who who might don't know this, I have a disability see, since the day I was born, but but this uh, didn't keep me for like going uh, to pursue my. career in sports law and to work in football so i will uh daniel will talk a little bit about how to break into the football industry and then i will uh share some uh, of my experience as a lawyer or a sports lawyer with a uh, disability and the in the project that i'm working on right now i adopt the game Thank you very much for for that Victor as a starting point and let me uh if if you don't mind and I hope you don't mind uh me embarrassing you a little bit at the beginning of our conversation but you know um I followed you for a long time on social media we've emailed and we've been in touch quite a lot um and what is absolutely incredible is um uh your passion your incredible desire um your perseverance i'm reading a book at the moment that i think you would really like you know maybe i'm like i'm quite good with trying to do book um recommendations but this book is called grit and i think this sums you up perfectly in uh, in so many ways and if i make one recommendation it is for everybody to um to to follow victor online because he's apart from obviously being um a world class lawyer and sports lawyer um if you want to understand how uh um a positive mindset works on a daily basis he shares um with everybody his uh gym workouts um in Arizona i believe as it's right um uh with your personal trainer i've seen videos of you playing football of you training when you were um over the over a period of time 
and this is from you know um, uh, a person with uh, that has a disability, obviously as you do, but with an incredibly positive mindset to try and um, um, to try and um, excel. And I, I, whenever I watch your content, I'm I'm suitably inspired and um it's great and it's a real like privilege for me to be able to to talk on the football industry with you as well thank you very much i really appreciate your words it's amazing i i admire you as well i admire your, your work and the fact that you are a, a great a person too that is also important very important in this uh, industry and feels to be a good person is the the right thing to do. So I really appreciate appreciate that uh, words. And yeah, let's get started. All right. So firstly, I'm going to maybe just ask you one question before we start on some of the journey. But if like me, um, maybe some of the reasons why we decided to be sports lawyers and football lawyers in the end was because of our passion for sport and our love for football. Um, you know, I, 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 I Uh, I understand that you were obviously originally from Venezuela. Um, that was where you were born and were brought up. I was born and brought up in slightly less tropical conditions in Liverpool, in England. Um, and that is and continues to be my uh, my team. What was it originally that, that you fell in love with about sports and, and football that enabled you to start along this journey? I uh, started going to, uh, to the marches. Uh, since I was uh, uh, a kid uh, uh, with my uncle that is from Spain and he taught me a lot about uh, football in, in Spain and uh, like also give, uh, give me the, the opportunity to f uh, fall in love with Venezuelan football and that way I started and the first game I ever uh, went to It was the game that Venezuela beat uh, Uruguay in 2001, and that uh, game changed the the Venezuelan uh, more than history in football. So I, since that day, I uh, keep going to to the stadium and like trying to uh, get in, in touch with the clubs. And, and stuff and now I'm working as a football lawyer so great and for me it was a similar thing I uh, my, my, my dad took me to a game when I was six years old I think six years old it was against Liverpool against Oxford United not as glamorous as Venezuela against uh, Uruguay to that extent but I, th I think Liverpool won 3-1 but I, I think I also I remember being quite tired about halfway through the second half and my dad having to take me home because I couldn't last for the whole for the whole time but that is that is where our passions our interests began you know when we were very young children basically and um and and my journey has been um has been one where I you know I come from a, a family of quite a lot of lawyers Um, I decided that maybe to do a law degree in Manchester University would be a good step for me, even if I didn't want to be a lawyer. For a while during my degree, I didn't want to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a, a sports agent. I think I'd watched Jerry Maguire too many times on the TV. And um, after having some good conversations with some lawyers, uh, there was one lawyer in particular called Tom Usher. I remember quite specifically after having a few beers with him when he came to visit the law school. He inspired me to think that maybe I could do really interesting things in law um, uh, and to why not give myself the opportunity to be able to do that. But even at that stage, I wanted to write articles on the Bosman ruling or multiple club ownership or broadcasting rights um, and those type of issues. And they were the things that I wrote about in my dissertation um, and then also my master's degree after that. And so they, those are my initial initial first steps. What were what were your type of steps that you started off from, you know, high school? Then, uh, then from there onwards, I like for me, I I started like a, a fan, as I said, and I really wanted to to be a, a football player, even though I ha I have a, a disability. So with that in mind, I 
like i i kept doing my all my physical therapy sessions and uh, one day a former physical therapist told me that even even if I, if i walk i wouldn't be able to to play so i i told her that okay that's your opinion but i won't gi- give up on my dream to to like to work or to uh, be close to to my passion so i said that i wanted to to be a uh, a coach but then i found for i found out that i couldn't be a uh, a coach because the physical requirements to to have the the license and a uh, former uh, coach from my from my my local team in my Kaiwa he told me like you have to study any career that you really like besides football and then i will teach you how to coach and my brother he is a lawyer so i uh, always uh, see i always saw and talked to him about the law and his law classes and i decided to pursue my my law degree and and then when i realized that i i, I was not going to be able to to become a coach i decided to do a research if and i i said like to myself if there is like a commercial law there there has to be something about sports law or football law so i uh, started that uh, research and soon after so i'm working for a, a sport law firm in uh, in caracas even though i was in maracaibo but that's one of the point we can talk later that that doesn't uh, matter i start working for 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 him for for that firm and then i decided to to go to to study a, a sport law master degree uh, at this uh, but since i like, i again i i don't i don't believe in the world limitation but this doesn't mean that i don't recognize that i have some barriers to overcome so i couldn't move from venezuela with my family to madrid to like do a full time uh, sports law degree but i uh, still wanted to to do uh, like to pursue that uh, sector or, the, or that field of, of study so what i did was to do a part time a program at iste because it, it was the way to have my 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 dream and to uh, to pursue my my goal so i i decided to do that and got a really good scholarship to do the the program because in Venezuela the situation is it's quite difficult and i i said to myself if if this is the opportunity that i have it, some some people say that okay you might not have the same opportunity to do networking but i already knew some of the top lawyers from South America and I has has them for uh, advice and to like help me with any that doing my 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 master and that way I I I pursued my my goal to to become a a sports lawyer fantastic and I would be really interested to hear I mean uh simply because we before we had this discussion we were talking about um 
what to call our discussion. <laughs> was it to get into the industry? Was it to adapt in the industry? Um, you, uh, you, you obviously have had to find ways to adapt in order to be able to succeed. And one of the things that I'm really interested in is how your mindset is on a daily basis, because you, you more than anybody else, ha always have a number of challenges to overcome. How do you uh, maintain that positive mindset throughout in life and also in terms of the work that you can do? I, I, some people uh, tell me that I have the adequate mindset. That and you, you, you were present at it, so you know uh, how uh, that mind uh, works. The artists uh, always go for for more, don't uh, sell for for anything. So I uh, keep that mindset, and even though I'm like I, I'm a sports lawyer, I'm a, I also teach uh, sports law like courses. And now I'm uh, working in my my own project about inclusion in football. Is I I believe the the way that it has to be is that uh, always uh, look out for for more and don't sell and always overcome because I truly believe that uh, we all have different uh, masks of adversity in life. Like mine is quite obvious, I think, but uh, some people have another kind of this uh, adversity. But you, if you live your uh, your life with passion and with uh, faith and perseverance, you can achieve your your goals. That's that's my my da daily mindset. And did you have to train yourself for that mindset or does it come naturally for you or, you know, because even for, even for me on my side, there are times when, you know, either I'm too stressed at work or I have things which, you know, impact on my life in different ways. And sometimes you're not as positive. I'm not as positive or there are things where you're like, oh, I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that or you know, is, is it something that naturally comes to you or is it something that you have also had to teach yourself and evolve processes for? It's, it, it comes naturally because, and this is like for, from my childhood, my, my family never uh, treated me like different, in a different way as a, uh, like a person with a disability. Uh, they they treat me as a uh, able body uh, person and that uh, taught me how to set a high uh, standard for myself and I always, I always try to uh, pursue that uh, that standard and to like accomplish my my goals so that's the, actually the only uh, mindset that I uh, recognize to and what I feel comfortable doing. Nice. And um, and and t I think everyone will be really interested as well. And I'm sorry for asking all of the questions. <laughs> it's okay. But um, yeah, what what uh, you know? The, t tell me what what is the work of a, a sports lawyer in the U.S.? What is the stuff that interests you the most? What is the stuff that you are able to do? What is the stuff that you you know enjoy? Uh, as a sports lawyer in. Here in the US, you know, we have the MLS that is quite a, a interesting league that many people don't know about in Europe and South America. And I have uh, represent uh, agencies that have players working in, the, in in the MLS, and they contact me to uh, advise them in the uh, legal work to prepare like uh, the the transfer stuff and this is uh, quite interesting because they have a CBA a collective bargaining agreement and they but they uh, they also have to uh, comply with some uh, 
international regulations uh, from FIFA when it comes uh, from like an international transfer. And since April of 2019, they decided to also comply with the training compensation and solidarity comp contribution. So that's like all of that factors have helped me to like advise mainly uh, agencies to uh, like do the the transfers to to the teams in in MLS that also have to comply with uh, you know the single entity structure and no compete and the rest of regulations and from the teaching part I teach sports law online courses in Spanish for people with, in South America and in Spain. And that's a, like another field of, uh, of interest for me. And I collaborate with some uh, institute, well, and recognized institute, well-known institutions in, in Europe. Like if they like SBI Barcelona, and now uh, I am I'm also like I would say motivational speaker. I I have for uh, I have uh, been able to give speeches for the Colorado Rockies in baseball. Uh, talking about my my story and. How I overcome adversity to to work in in sports. No, it's fascinating. It's really interesting stuff. And you know the 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 thing that I um, enjoyed reading about all of your passions and the the journeys that you've had from Venezuela to Madrid to Arizona to um, uh, to uh, Phoenix Rising, for example. And I wonder if you um, are able to um, give some, you know, background as to that is one of your newer passions, I guess, now as well. Yeah, like I, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, I w work out at Arizona State University in an adaptive training program. And that uh, like helped me a lot because I, I grew up focusing a lot in my in my mindset that in in some point I disconnected from my my body and that's not, that wasn't the smartest idea to to have and in here I understood that okay I I am a sports lawyer I work in a, in football but but I need to like slow down sometimes and work in my body because uh, in some conditions like like mine, if uh, I don't uh, work out, this is not good for my for my body, and then I I will be more limited to like do the daily daily basis things in my life. So uh, I keep uh, challenging myself, that's the word, doing things that I thought that I wouldn't be able to do, like playing power child so uh, football, soccer, and also trying to adapt to calling football soccer in here because sometimes they, people say, okay, you're talking about uh, soccer, like football in, in America. Here in America, football is American football. And that's a quiet challenge, but I enjoy it. And getting involved with uh, Phoenix Rising too, I have really good friends there. Uh, uh, here plays John Baguero uh, here. The, the son of Jose Maria Baquero that I had the opportunity to work with in, in Venezuela. 
she was advising a club that I was uh, giving advisory that in that time. So that's also really good. And yeah, trying to now to uh, pursue my another uh, purpose with my with my new project for inclusion in football. It's fantastic. And I think one of the things that maybe we can do more regularly is these type of um, Instagram chats and talk about particular topics maybe that either we can ask our social media followers um, what they'd be interested to hear about. Um, it may be our career journey. It may be a particular topic in sports law. It may be uh, examples of things that have happened to us over our careers, maybe, etc. So maybe that is the next thing for us to to possibly think about, maybe. Yeah. And um, if I may ask you uh, for our audience, uh, how, like, what uh, tips or uh, advice you would give as a employee uh, about how I'm going to say, like, an able body uh, sports or football lawyer and outdoor, outdoor in, in in football? What, what would be your... Uh, advice for the uh, law students or the any uh, any person that wants to uh, have a career in, in football maybe not in law but in mm. any field of the uh, football industry look as you you know as well as i do it's uh it's a difficult industry um to get involved in um i think the things that um people think is I'm a football fan, I'm passionate about football, therefore I have all of the knowledge and expertise to be able to, to work in the industry. And I think um, the disconnect sometimes is uh, making sure that you use the passion um, and the um, interest to be able to invest in yourself. And usually that comes through um, reading articles, um, upskilling your skills, um, understanding the industry, how the industry works. Like you were saying, speaking with industry professionals, trying to understand um, the, the, the current issues that are affecting the game. You know, it's easy to say I have a passion for Liverpool and therefore I want to be a football lawyer. The truth is, is that if you really want to be able to combine that, you need to be able to tell me what are the five most important cases um, in football law at the moment and why they are significant or explain to me in an image rights contract why these five things um, should be concerning if you were to see them. Because in the end, we are query whether there is even a thing called sports law. In the end, I am an intellectual property lawyer. I am a contracts lawyer. I am a conflicts lawyer. I am a regulations lawyer. I am a reputation management lawyer, just the same as you. Um, th these are the things um, ultimately that combine with the industry specific knowledge and the networks that we develop. So it's all of those things which become very, very important in my mind, which is great that you found an area, someone that a student has found an area that they enjoy, but then the hard work begins. It's converting the interest into expertise. Yeah, I, I understand that very well. It's a, a very high responsibility to manage the risk of a, a transfer or a transaction. You have a huge uh, uh, responsibility, uh, not uh, not only with the with the client, but uh, with the with the player as well. Because maybe uh, if they like blame you for something that didn't went uh, as well, you, uh, you you it's not about losing the client. It's not just about that. It's about the in in the agencies for a uh, world. It's about the career of the of the player. It's about uh, his future. So uh, it's a huge load in, in in your shoulders. So I I think that people need to acknowledge that uh, in a better way because, as you said in the in the beginning, 
and some people try this uh, doing thinking about uh, be being Jerry Maguire, but sometimes uh, life and reality don't work don't work as the movies and the like you have to uh, learn and win your your space and trying to find your your niche. For example, you 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 were talking about uh, cases and one of the reasons that I have uh, decided to create adopt the game was because yeah, now, right now there is going on the uh, Manchester City case uh, for, for financial fair play uh, regulations but uh, you don't see a club uh, being excluded from uh, Europe for not complying the accessible uh, disability access uh, regulations. So maybe if uh, the institutions like UEFA uh, or FIFA work, in a, I would say access fair play, maybe that uh, would bring a change. And I also believe that anyone can uh, work in, f in football despite of the disability and the way to change the, the industry or to adapt the in industry is to uh, put the people with disabilities in the in your uh, in decision making roles uh, in football to actually uh, adapt the the industry so yeah it's a quite uh, interesting world, but you have to you have to find your your own uh, space, your own niche, and and then like go from there with passion and perseverance. And when things get tough, you need to uh, remember why you started and why you are doing what you are doing, because things maybe don't like work out at the at first at the first the first time you you try but you have to keep going keep trying and keep pursuing and like for me what was to was good to to know that i i didn't have uh, nothing to to lose by contacting a sports lawyer or any any person and that uh, give me the motivation to to like reach out to people that may may or not uh, uh, respond but if you have you have the opportunity to build really good uh, relationships in in football doing that and you don't ha you don't need to to be in like, and this is, this conversation is a good example. You don't need to be in Arizona, or I don't need to be in in, in Liverpool to uh, meet and have networking. And especially in these times, we have to learn how to adapt to the digital world. I think the lawyers and the clubs are uh, trying to use more the the digital, uh, the, the technology to uh, close uh, operations, and that's where we going. And yeah, is is the right. Uh, I I I don't have all the answers, but I think it's a good good perspective of where the industry is going, and a good advice for the people that is starting in this uh, interesting or maybe sexy uh, world of football because what I've learned is that when you say, oh, it's post lawyer, it's, it's nice. People think in NBA uh, or whatever or MLS or Jerry Maguire or Jorge, Jorge Mendes, things like that, but is it's really good. I agree.
I agree. And um, I think on, on, that, on that very inspirational and motivational note, um, we, can, um, we can start um, uh, ra- wrapping up the conversation until next time. But I think what, what we can tell everybody is, hopefully if my technology works well, we will um, be able to post this conversation online so people can, can listen to it afterwards. With your permission, maybe we can put it on uh, my, uh, my podcast as well so people can hear um, the, the first story of our, of our collaborations together, hopefully. And, uh, and I, I think there will be a great opportunity for us just to speak on lots of different football topics over the next few months and we can start building this hopefully really nice initiative. Of course, yeah, I will. I will be honored, and it's been an honor to 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 talk to you. And for all the, I I, I thank the all the the people that joined our conversation. And feel free to to post it. I I follow your podcast. Your I really enjoy your your book. I think it's a really good uh, guy for any uh, person that. It doesn't matter if you are starting or you have some experience in the in the industry. It's really good, and I know uh, so some of your uh, story, what, how you started to work in in football, and I think we have many topics to talk about in the following uh, chapters or of our uh, online uh, collaborations. No, I, I agree. And, um, and uh, again, thank you for your time. Try not to get too sunburnt today, please. And, um, and hopefully we have the first time of, uh, of many to be able to, to have some conversations. So I will put this online. We will then start asking our followers about maybe topics for our next discussion. And, um, and we can hopefully speak again soon. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. And stay safe. Stay uh, inside. I know it's a rainy day. Rainy day. <laughs> it's really warm. And yeah, I look forward to our uh, next conversation and to see what uh, the people want, want us to, to talk about. Perfect. Have a good day. And thanks, everybody, for joining us again. You do. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Bye.